In addition to the mountain carving, the visitor's complex of the Crazy Horse Monument includes the Indian Museum of North America, the Native American Cultural Center, the Sculptor's Studio, Home and Workshop, a 40,000 square foot orientation center, and two theaters. In 1939, Korszak Julkowski's marble sculpture of Polish patriot Ignacy John Paderewski won first prize at the New York World's Fair. That same year, he also assisted Gutzon Borglum in the carving of the Mount Rushmore Memorial in South Dakota's Black Hills. The fame, as well as his familiarity with the Black Hills, prompted several Lakota chiefs to approach him about a monument honoring Native Americans. Chief Henry Standing Bear of the Lakota wrote him, saying, My fellow chiefs and I would like the white man to know the red man has great heroes, too. More than just carving a mountain to honor the heritage, tradition, and living culture of North American Indians, Crazy Horse Monument is a rebuttal to Mount Rushmore itself. Separated by less than 20 miles in South Dakota's Black Hills, the two monuments speak to a more significant cultural divide. The Black Hills are sacred to many Native American tribes, who were none too thrilled when the faces of four presidents were carved into relief into one of the Black Hills mountains. The namesake of their monument, Crazy Horse, was a war leader of the Oglala Lakota tribe and a prominent leader in the Sioux resistance to white encroachment on the Black Hills. At Henry Standing Bear's request, Korshak met with the leader shortly afterward and began planning a monument. Over the next few years, he conducted research and began drafting the sculpture. Korshak had to put the project on hold when the United States entered World War II, and he volunteered for service himself. After the war, in 1947, Joukowsky moved to the Black Hills and began to search for a suitable mountain for his sculpture. On June 3, 1948, the first blast was made on Thunderhead Mountain, and the memorial dedicated to the Native American people was begun. When done, the sculpture will be the largest monument in the world, bigger than the pyramids of Giza. The entire monument will be 563 feet high by 641 feet long. All four heads of the presidents at Mount Rushmore would fit inside Crazy Horse's head itself. And whereas Mount Rushmore was carved into the face of a mountain in relief, Korshak's vision before Crazy Horse was to carve him in the round, or to carve out completely both sides of the mountain. It took 50 years to complete the face, which is almost nine stories high on its own. In the beginning, Korshak was broke and did much of the work alone. He chopped trees and built his own wooden staircase up the mountain. Several times each day, he went up and down those stairs, carrying supplies, equipment, and dynamite from his tent to the work site hundreds of feet above. He did this day after day, year after year, decade after decade. Korshak continued his work until he died at the monument site in 1982. He was buried in a tomb at the base of the mountain. In life, Korshak used to believe that you should never forget your dreams. After his death, his wife Ruth took over the project as director of the Crazy Horse Memorial Foundation. Seven of his ten children have continued the carving of the monument or are active in the Crazy Horse Memorial Foundation, so that Korshak's dream lives in legacy. I visited both Crazy Horse Monument and the Mount Rushmore Memorial on my trip to South Dakota. Mount Rushmore is undeniably beautiful, gleaming white and majestic in the sun, but to me it felt Disney-fied, sterile. Crazy Horse on the other hand is raw and organic, literally being revealed day by day. It is also a family-run business and every staff member I encountered seemed truly thankful that I'd come. Though separated by less than 20 miles, Crazy Horse receives less than half the visitors Mount Rushmore does. If you're in the Black Hills of South Dakota, though, I implore you to visit both and not forget that there are two sides to every story.